I'm Kevin Mobius. I'm the ever elusive Josh McLeod. I'm Justin Turner. And I don't know who that guy was last time, but I'm back. And that's what's important. Toby's back! Yay! 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 All right, I'm going to need about 10% more enthusiasm or you're both fired. Wow. Um, I can do it in a German voice. You know what? I'll take it. Yeah! Oh, wait, that was the werewolf voice. Never mind. I mean, it was absolutely fascinating. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Toby's Speaking... back. Let's we go. Yes. Well, we got to address this. Toby's back. You know, Toby. Oh, uh, well, duh. People are going to want to know how's the how's the baby. Uh, uh, yes. little baby's it's fine. Just... He uh, not... he was he's very healthy, baby boy. Um, he's the only baby I've in, I've ever encountered that never cries. Um, oh wow! It's not it's not that he like can't. He just doesn't. He he makes like these little pterodactyl noises. When he's when he's upset, it's it's kind of amazing. Um, but he's so chill, and um, I actually p- I'll put a picture uh, linking to to me with Babby in the show notes. Um, he's 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 great. His name is Xander, and he is awesome. Be and careful, I'm... kids who don't cry generally grow up to become psychopaths. Well, mm. I mean, it's not that like he he does cry. It's just like he doesn't cry when he like wants something it's weird like he, he'll he cry if like he's he's hurt or like if if his mom's away for too long but generally speaking he just he just makes pterodactyl screeches which i think is is the best thing because who who doesn't like a pterodactyl screeching baby i mean seriously pterodactyl screeches from like jurassic park not actually correct pterodactyl screeches because if they did they'd sound like chickens yes but he he makes jurassic park pterodactyl screech and i have called okay so this is interesting it rained at his gender confirmation it rained at the baby shower it was storming (laughs) it was like thundering and lightning when he was born uh my nickname for him is stormy uh i will also accept (laughs) Zeus god of thunder or listen if... to the rhythm of the falling rain telling me just what a fool I've been sorry or we needed if... to get a rain song in there it's like requirement or if you're a Doctor Who fan Stormageddon yeah. is, is also we'll go with Stormageddon again. yes I like Stormageddon I'll take Stormageddon Stormy, again. Stormy okay. for short um, but we're not here to talk about babies in fact quite the opposite uh, today, we're, it's going to be kind of a different tact, because we're not talking about a specific episode, we're not talking about a season, or even re- uh, really a theme, we're talking about a specific distributor and production company that happened to have a few films on MST3K. Uh, Josh, you want to take this away? Film Ventures International, or as they are more commonly known... FVI, a company that probably would have, I don't think would have had the reputation they had had they not been attached to Mystery Science Theater 3000, which is ironic because that was sort of their last bastion uh, after they were purchased by uh, INI, but they have an interesting history, probably one of the more interesting histories of any of any company associated with Mystery Science Theater. I'm trying to think of any other, but American International didn't really have that interesting story. Crown International didn't really have an interesting story. Uh, FBI, they're just a kind of a weird, um, kind of a weird company in retrospect. Almost a, an Ed Wood sort of scheme in, in a couple ways. Mm, more or less. I mean, it was founded by... Edward Montoro, who was a he was living he was in uh, somewhere in I think Detroit or Wisconsin, and he actually he was like a he he had some kind of it was something industrial I can't remember what it was like foundry working or something, uh-huh. and he got bit by the film bug after he almost died in a plane accident. As you do, yeah. And so he began I, at the time I think he had maybe made one film and then he bought the rights to. Uh, he started buying the rights to a lot of these Italian movies. Uh, the the big one being Beyond the Door. 
um, which was a Italian movie starring um, I can't remember who it was one of the American Ju- actresses Juliet Mills. Julia Mills was in that, and he right. did the FBI did the distribution of it in America, and it made a lot of money. Uh, it ended up getting sued by Warner Brothers, who felt that it copied The Exorcist, but I think the case was dropped because ultimately they could not prove enough uh, similarity to go forward with any kind of lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And then he moved the company to George to Atlanta, Georgia, the hometown of one Toby Mobius. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you know well, why he a, moved? It, you know why he moved why? it down there. This will be interesting. Uh, why did tax it? breaks? Basically, basically, it was because Atlanta was so laxed and everything that there really wasn't any regulations that prevented him from doing a lot of the kind of the shady stuff that he did. Yeah, and on, and honestly, that has not changed too much. Uh, to to be completely well, honest, in the Atlanta film scene. Well, it, yeah, I, mean, I was about to say Atlanta has become a pretty hot. Uh, film scene in the last couple of years. Um, the Marvel movie, most of the, a lot of the Marvel movies have been filming down there. Um, they Tyler Perry. Filmed, uh, they hit Netflix series Stranger Things down there. It's becoming a popular place. Walking Dead. To, as a film. Yeah, it's a very popular film uh, location now these days. Uh, yeah, Tyler Perry of... literally accounts for I think forty percent of our of our film gross here. It's crazy and. It's funny because they like, just did Guardians down there. Guardians two film yeah, down there. Yeah, um, they did the SpongeBob movie on Tybee Island, uh, which is not terribly far from here. And I think some of it was also filmed in Savannah. Dumb and Dumber two, a lot of it filmed in Marietta, uh, actually places where I, I like to go. Um, I think uh, Amazing Spider Man two has some stuff here. Spider Man Homecoming did some shots here. Ghostbusters did some shooting here because, I mean, really, when you get right down to it, all big cities kind of look the same. Uh, Most of that film was filmed in Boston, but set in New York, so, because New York doesn't look like New York anymore. Um, Yeah, I thought it, it, since I'm a fan of Stranger Things, I thought it amusing that they chose Atlanta when um, the setting for Stranger Things is a a small town in Indiana. And and they're going to be back there in a couple weeks to start filming season two pretty soon. Yeah, I'm actually going to try and do some extra work on it. Uh, if, oh, dude! If, I, if, if, if you if you see or hear anything, you you let me know. I will. <laughs> I will. Uh, the, it's gonna be crazy because of how popular the show is now. There's there's been people like trying to like sneak like set picks and not like film locations. For yeah, to I to wanted to get into doing Ghostbusters, but by the time I knew they were doing it, it was too late. Um, so it's like, dang it. Um, but <laughs> anyway, but, back to. Back yeah. To film adventures. Yeah. Back to film adventures. Oh, one last thing. There is literally a yep. film studio ten minutes from my house. Not even joking. It's wow. literally just down the road. It's it's run by the county, and I think that's <laughs> awesome. And it used to be a jail. I'm told. It's it's actually right next to the hospital, <laughs> the gigantic new hospital. Oh my god! I cut my hand on this. Dolly yeah. grip. Oh, hey, how convenient. Yeah, pretty much. Wow, I can see why they he was doing it. I mean, like, he got beyond the door for, like, only $100,000 and the film grossed $9 million at the box office. That's, like, pretty gigantic profit. I mean, uh, his his first ever film, a uh, softcore little title named Getting Into Heaven, uh, made for about 13000 grossed 20 times its cost. So... And then Grizzly was a... Grizzly was another big one. That, oh, they, yeah. Um, they only cost like just under like a million to, to make, and it's it made like thirty nine million to box with office. Bears. So that's, that's... He really made it out big in the seventies, and then it all went to crap in the eighties. But we'll get to that in a minute. Like a lot of film studios. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he had the Georgia Peach logo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he was like, "Okay, I don't want to live in Atlanta anymore. I'm going to go to San. I'm going to go to L. A. So he moved to L. A. Sorry. Wow, there's a lot of interesting movies that they were. Yeah. got their hands on i'm looking at like looking over like the filmography it's very interesting actually uh it's interesting grizzly there was an aborted sequel uh i forget what it's oh, called oh yes Gr- Gr- grizzly um... was it grizzly 2 the the something um, um i'll do a quick search i it I've has like i think the... they ended up make i think they ended up making it but they like Changed the title like it was like the animals. I don't something about animals. Mm, it was, it it was make it, to but the they predator. moved it away from. They moved it away from the bear to just animals in general. No, well, it they it was mostly filmed like 
um, and they just need to do like insert like special effects of the bear and stuff. But the film, I can't remember the exact story, but it got shelved and it's never been released. I mean, there's a a bootleg like of a rough cut. Has the leaked, print. leaked out years ago, and like if you hunt for it, you can find it because it, it's got a lot of familiar people, and it's got like a pretty famous like uh, Charlie Sheen and George Clooney who get killed by the bear in the open. <laughs> Here's, okay. And uh, you got John Reese Davies as like the bear hunter brought in to so I, like kill the bees. Uh, a lot of other like familiar actors, and it's it's insane. Like um, Cinema Snob did a review of it a while back, but he had to take it down because people actually own. The, 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 the producer film. of of the or the producer's wife of the film contacted him and said, uh, contacted him for uh, copyright reasons and told him and so he took the review down. But yeah, I think the, it may uh, still be on YouTube if you can find it. But everything's still uh, somewhere. It was shot yeah, in Hungary too. The, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, the the film basically what happened was the main scenes, like the first unit work, was all done. They just had to use, do the second unit with the special effects. And then the producer disappeared. Yeah. Was that just, Montoro or was that with, a different guy? Joseph Proctor. He he just disappeared okay. with all of the money. And he just left. Oh, yeah. That's, so they took, that's right. Lord. Yeah, yeah so there's shot footage of a bear attacking a concert in Hungary. And they tried to put it out. It didn't work. Uh, and then the bootleg came out in I think two thousand seven something like that. So it was, it was it was interesting. Um, and yeah, I've seen the uh, the review by. Uh... Yeah, the work print leaked out uh, online back in like two thousand five, about a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, taking all Lord... the money and leaving the country—a common theme with FBI. I was trying to remember. Oh what yeah, the was, <laughs> like the opening movies, like these three like hikers get killed by Grizzly. It's Charlie Sheen, George Clooney, and uh, Laura Dern from uh, Jurassic Park. So <laughs> this was like this was like early '80s before any of them ever became well known. So it was like <laughs> it's like they're the opening movie and they get they get killed by the Grizzly Bear. <laughs> You know, occasionally a movie will have like one, like you know how Nightmare on Elm Street has Johnny Depp in in mm-hmm. in it for a little bit. Usually, you'll have like one guy who ends up. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth has Kevin Bacon. You know, one kind of winning. This movie has two. It has it, or even three. You could argue with Laura Dern, and they all get killed at like the first thirty seconds. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that's yeah, not but... a cur- if that's not a sign, this film's not going to go very far. Then I don't know what is. It also has a uh, Louise Fletcher as well in it. She. Uh, so you got you got Academy Award winning actors and John Reese Davies also in this unreleased film. There's a couple other familiar faces, but yeah, it was, yeah, there's a lot of mystery about like you know it's like you know why it got got it, it was never finished in the super shell. But um, yeah, if you if you hunt for it, you can probably find the boot, the uh, the boot link, uh, work for it. Uh, yeah, I looked for it. It's not hard to find. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty amusing to watch. I remember, especially like, uh, just quick before we move on, there, um, John Reese Davis get like it, it gets killed near the end by about spoiler alert, and the, the bear is in the shot, and so it shows him having to like do stuff to make it look like he's getting like mauled. <laughs> it's really funny to watch. Oh, I love that man though. Uh, but uh, let's see. So you know, it's like. He, he was making a lot of money, you know, just like with these low budget films that were making, you know, mil- good good chunk of money at the box office at the time, in, you know, in the seventies. I mean, it's not like, you know, you know, like the you know breaking in like the hundreds of millions that you see now. You know, it's like, although there's plenty of like a lot of horror indie horror films are like making like tons of money because they have such low budgets and then they make like, you know. 30, 40, 50 million dollars a box off and make a giant profit. So it's like it, that that's still a thing, but it, it was um, more, more common back then. You know, it's like, you know, this was before Jaws and Star Wars brought about the era of the blockbuster. You had the niche market at that point. Mm-hmm, exactly. Spe- speaking of Jaws. Uh, we're going to get into great, we're going to get oh, into it. Great white. <laughs> great white, great white, or as I like to call it, uh, FBI's great el- what is it? FBI's albatross, as it were. Yes, yeah. in 1980, <laughs> they 
they got their hands to the rights to the uh, Great White, which is basically an Italian Jaws ripoff. Directed by Enzo G. Directed by Enzo G. Costieri, who directed Escape from the Bronx. Yep, James Franciscus and uh, Vic Morrow. Yep. Uh, But then, uh, then they got sued because, hey, wait a minute, this movie is a little too similar to that uh, Steven Spielberg movie. You know what's funny? If you watch the movie, it's not that similar. I mean, it's. Okay, yeah, it is very similar. There's a, they're they're hunting a giant shark, but there yeah. had been like eight hundred ninety nine thousand seven hundred and forty four other movies that did similar things. I think what the, got them in trouble was the ad campaigns because they promoted the crap out of this movie. Yeah, they yeah, spent they, like they did pretty well. Well, they it never only, got released. It was of, well, it was it was in theaters for a week before the law yeah. the the Universal won the lawsuit and they had to pull it, but um. They spent like a couple million dollars to advertise a movie, so it was um, they took a major financial hit over. Our the, friend Fred, game. our friend Fred Fritz actually saw this movie in theaters under one of its under other titles before it got I, pulled. Yes, I think he mentioned that to me once. Yeah. Love I wish that. I'd asked him when, like, what title he saw it under, but oh well. But he he bas- Montoro basically blew the bank wanting to promote the crap out of this movie, and then. You know, he had all this merchandise that he couldn't do. Once this lawsuit happened, he couldn't do anything with this merchandise that he had had. He spent, mil- like, thousands upon thousands of dollars on this merchandise that was basically useless. Which, that's got to suck if you're a director. Yeah. Or a producer, I should say. I don't think Montoro I mean, ever directed anything. Well, I mean, he he directed that, that softcore flick, but that was about okay. it. Okay. I don't think he was that disappointed when that one didn't fail, though. No, that that one, that one didn't fail. I know. It did very well. I know. I was making a bad joke. But oh well. He wouldn't have been disappointed if that one had failed. Okay, moving on. Well, and that's mm-hmm. and then thus began the the downward decline that was Film Ventures International. Yeah, the they, fiasco with Great White was the beginning of the end. Yeah, and they started doing a lot of. Uh, they still went on. They were on for a while. I think like five more years before the bankruptcy they, really started. Yeah, they filed for Chapter Eleven in 1985. Okay, that was the year that they filed. And then the thing, the the, the obvious thing, and the thing that I guess we're going to have to speculate about for the next ten minutes is in 1984. I guess it was yeah. where they were on the verge of bankruptcy uh, and facing the divorce from his wife, where she ended up getting half of everything Montoro basically went into FVI one day got as much money as he could get and was never heard from ever again left just disappeared no one's ever seen or heard from ever again and that's why we can actually say somewhat deflammatory stuff about him because we can't get sued because if he were to come forward uh, he would probably get in more trouble than we would for saying bad things about him yeah he, he would be in jail on embezzlement charges. Yeah. Whereas we would get like a what a four hundred dollar fine maybe. Oh, okay. Not. I don't even think even that. For for libel. Oh. Well, I mean, kind of hard to sue someone for libel when you're in jail. That's true. Well, we'll we'll just we'll just we'll just try to avoid saying we'll just say. I mean, he did seem like kind of a sleazy guy. I mean, I I never met like... I never met the guy. I don't know, but you know. But most, it... It's it is sleazy that you know, like he he took a bunch of money and just it just disappeared in a puff of smoke when yeah. that when everything was going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. I mean, that says a lot of, about someone's character. Right there. The thing is, he's I mean, to be fair, he's probably not still alive because he would be eighty eight. It's possible, but again, the, the 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 theory is that he moved to Mexico, that he took the money and fled to Mexico, which is. Not a terrible theory. He probably could have hidden out down there. Uh, I I don't know. Do you guys want to negate that theory? You think he's somewhere else? Um. Uh, well, who knows? He may have gone to Mexico. It's like who knows what happened to him. I'm sure probably we'll find out someday. He became Ted Turner the whole time. Oh, uh, that was brilliant. <laughs> he had that. He the somehow ended up crime. bleaching his skin. He bleached his skin. Got a. Uh, a southern accent got a, a southern accent from the 1940s built a time machine and then went back in time and assumed some guy named ted turner's identity 
and created and a multi-million dollar media empire. It was brilliant. He, he used his forward knowledge of the future to create CNN and mm -hmm. start uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling. He was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now, how many, like, film venture um, movie properties did they uh, do throughout the course of the show? You, you well, before we, before, before we get to that, we kind of have to explain, because they were basically bankrupt in 1985, so we kind of have to explain how is it that they were able to distribute movies five years later, and the answer to that is they were bought up by INI, which stands for um, International... Uh, something incorporated i don't know some other distributor in la and through the fbi label is how they were kind of able to do a lot of that shady stuff later on with the mystery science movies but to answer your question how many were done on the show let me do the quick math in my head uh one two three four you don't get any more until five six Seven, eight, I think nine total. I may be missing one, but nine that I know of. Which are? Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, Cave Dwellers, oh. Pod People, Stranded in Space, then we don't get any for a while, then we get Master Ninja 1, then we get Master Ninja 2, then we, get, then we get Space Travelers, then we get uh, City Limits, and then I think the last one is being from another planet. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. That's pretty great. Uh, and there, there's uh, a room. I, I wasn't able to verify this, but there's rumors that there was there was also versions of Gamera versus Barugon and Gunslinger out there as well. But I don't know if that's true. Hmm. Sounds like movies they would they would have wanted to get their hands on. Like, Barugon by maybe. The rest of the titles. Gunslinger seems kind of kind of an odd choice since but whatever i don't know i mean oh, yeah, their first, the the name of the company their first big hit was a spaghetti western so i guess it kind of made sense I true. See that. um but yeah well, they would have had to change the time and they did a lot of horror and sci-fi movies so it makes a lot of sense for stuff like um being from another planet and, uh stranger space traveler uh you know got to a movie or two but well and we have to we have to talk about the other facet, which was the way they were able to get away with it, which was under yeah. very questionable legal practices, mm -hmm. when these films fell into the public domain or rights lapsed, they would buy them, they, would, they would snatch them, they would uh, change the title, mm -hmm. and they would slap on new opening and ending credit scenes, and they oh, would change the... <laughs> completely different movie. Although they did some kind of with City Limits, they didn't do that. They just took the footage and then kind of step framed it and added like, new credits. Like, like the like the for the for the pod people episode, the opening is uh, the footage is from um, Galaxy Invader. Yeah, uh, what's the one that has Prisoners of the Lost Universe? Stranded in, in Space. Space, which Rift Tracks eventually did. That's what that was called. Richard Hatch. And uh, Cave Dwellers has Tor the Mighty, which is yeah, well, uses, yeah, which uses it's funny, well, it's, which kind of works because it's it's a, it's the sequel. And I don't remember what the Godzilla one was. Do you remember? Um, Son yes. of Godzilla. Son of yes. Godzilla. Yes, okay. footage from Son of Godzilla. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the other three didn't really. The other five didn't really do anything to that effect. They did with Master Ninja. They had that weird slow motion footage of that guy practicing kind of judo kata moves. And then in space traps, uh, so yeah, space traveler. Or I always get space travelers and stranded in space confused because the titles really they are kind of, kind of <laughs> they kind of apply to each other when you think it's sort of like Beatniks yeah. and Rebel Set. You know, if you switch the titles, it actually would probably make more sense. But exciting that said, but space traveler just kind of has this like slowy footage of what looks like bluey water. City limits. They just step frame some credits, and then being from another planet has like slow footage over old hieroglyphics the best yeah fei and those things look like they cost maybe 33 dollars to film i wouldn't go that far i mean this this was the 80s 33 dollars by today's standards so like 750 by 80s standards yeah okay that's 
and like a half drunk bottle of Dr. Pepper. Hey, Murray, uh, slap some credits together. Here's seven dollars. Go get yourself some Burger King. Okay. <laughs> But it, it always felt like that they never actually watched the movie when they retitled them. Like, what Cave Dwellers is not... Aliens, like, like, think... it's pod people. There's, like, three... I only remember, like, one scene where there's actually some pods with some people in them. I don't remember yes. any other scene like that. And Cave Dwellers only has the scene at the beginning with the with the kind of primitive people. It doesn't have... A, it, there's no... Ator was not a cave dweller. He was smart and stuff. I mean, guys, they weren't really say they were pretty on the nose with that one. Uh, what were the other ones? Malcolm Master Ninja, being from another planet, or as someone once pointed out to me, Rose Blood is the Rosebud is the sled. <laughs> that's basically what that that's what it should be because it gives away the ending. I mean, Master Ninja is pretty appropriate. I think it was called no, I guess it was just called the Master. Yeah, just called I, don't, the Master. I don't know if they had, I don't know if they edited that themselves or I. You know, the more I think about it, I think that it had been edited for them. I think it was already yeah. in movie form at that point. So I think it was already called Master Ninja. I think they added the I at the end of the title. They probably yeah. got it, like, just through a distribution package. They got it, retitled it, and now it's their movie. Boom! It's, it's, okay, it's literally like that. There's this comic that goes around on Tumblr a lot of uh, someone has something. Goes, I made this hands it to someone else, walks away, and the person that gets it goes, I made this. It's basically that. They just change, like, the background image of it? Do they just, like, add a new frame each time? No, it's it's just, like, uh, it's just kind of parodying that culture of, I didn't really make this, but I said I made it because I added a watermark to it. You know, like, like sites like yeah. Bombs World used to do back in the day, and now they don't exist anymore. Um, People got sick of their yeah. watermarks. I mean, Neil C.C. Riga wrote a whole song about that, uh, or, or like funny junks, they, stuff like that. They'll just add their watermark to it. Oh, it's it's ours now. Retro junk. Yeah, retro junk. Uh, I funny. There's one side that likes putting minions on things, and I'm just like die please there's a funny well, we'll get to a funny story about that much 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 later in the future which is a hint that you need to listen to the end of this episode in the not too distant future you might say yeah go on stick to the theme um but that was a thing that people did that was a thing that was done which is take a public domain movie add a new intro and outro and change the title slightly and now hey it's my movie now I mean, that's that's still a thing people do. I mean, go to any dollar store in America. Yeah. Or Canada or Europe. It It is a thing, like, uh, occasionally you'll find, like, a slightly recut version of, like, Manos or mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Dracula with um, Bela Lugosi, and they'll just, like, change the opening credit and maybe add like a short to it oh it's it's different do you know what they did with stranded uh space traveler god i keep confusing those but do you know stranded, what they did stranded with space and Tra space traveler do you know what they did with that one besides adding the opening and ending credits this is something i don't think a lot of people know about what what, what oh. did they do they actually add I, they may have done this with the other ones as well the only reason it stands out to me is because there do you know that the scene where um uh lee grant um is, is called into um, Gregory Peck's office and where she's told that, that um, Richard Crenna has died. Yeah. If you watch that scene, they used the opening music from Pod People and they put that music into that scene. And you know there's no way that music existed in the original version. So <laughs> occasionally they would add the mu occasionally they would add some music, I think, as well so, in order to change. So wait a minute, that means they did watch the movie. <laughs> They, they, which they, makes it they even have, worse. Said, okay, what they did was they said, "Hey, uh, Carl, um, uh, can compose some music for these opening credits. Here's thirteen dollars." And then Carl would compose some music. And he's like, "Okay, let's put this on the opening of these credits. Okay, now let's take the same music and put this somewhere in the other movie, and then so that, that way we can ours. claim it." Yeah, exactly. If you buy the if you buy the 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 Blu-ray of 
Marooned, you will not get that music. Hmm. I know that people want that music, but you will not get it on that Blu-ray. <laughs> you you, will, you will not have it, sir. I don't know if there is a Blu-ray performer. I don't think what, there is. I think what I was Pod People's it. original title again? Los Nuevos Extraterrestres, or as it's in English, it would be called The New Alien, although I think it was originally retitled and released as The Unearthling, and then FBI got a copy of The Unearthling and changed that to uh, Pod People. I'm trying to think what, I mean, maybe I it wasn't that. I guess that's probably for the best, because that would have been really confusing on Mystery Science Theater to have The Unearthly and then The Unearthling. Ling in the same season, yeah. I mean, I guess they could have just called it that movie with the stupid Trumpy elephant nose thing, which is what I would have called. Yeah, uh, one of the other one of the other titles was called the Extraterrestrial Visitor, and I'm I, I'm assuming we all know the story about Pod People, but I would elaborate for anyone who doesn't like. Okay, if, if for anyone, this who, is like for anyone who doesn't first know, theater podcast. I don't know. This, okay, so, okay, I know this because I love this episode, so it's it's why I, I don't. Know, but... So I don't know it probably. <laughs> well, then go to hell. <laughs> okay, uh, it's the not story... bad. It's just not my favorite. The story is that the director Juan Peeker Simon, he wanted to direct. He wanted to make just your typical aliens killing people movie, mm-hmm. and he wanted to do this in 1982. And another movie came out in 1982 with an alien that uh, was a little bit more lighthearted, that was received a little bit better by mainstream audiences. We will call this movie um, LT, the yeah. lukewarm terrestrial, uh, so we don't get sued by the Spielberg estate. Um, but at this, the studio or the distributor, one of the two, pressured him and basically said, okay, now we don't want you to make a Aliens Killing People movie. We want you to make a... They basically made him add the cute kid that befriends Trumpy. Yeah. Who does Which really doesn't work. Yeah. Well, they, it doesn't, it, it doesn't they, work because no one ever... You can tell. You can tell the tone, sh- the, the tone... There's two different, like, tones to the movie. It's like, it's supposed to be a more straight up, like, uh, yeah, this alien's killing us. But they're like, no, no, it, it's, it's, we got to add the ET element here. ET's huge, man. And so that's where you have the kid and Trumpy, and it, it's, it's a quite a stark contrast, you know, when uh, the other one is like, you know, killing people. <laughs> it's, it's a mess. I really want. Happens. Go ahead. That's, it's what happens when you try to take a movie uh, concept and try to shove something else in there that doesn't fit. It's classic. It's a classic Timing. Mistake. But it made for a br- – I think it would have been crap either way, but it made for a brilliant episode. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the best in yeah. my opinion. You know, I really wish I could find a copy of the F- Film Ventures International version of Pod People just so I could have the end credit music and the opening credit music. Because that's not on – again, like the Space Travelers before, that's not on the version you can – that's not on, that's not on the version of Pod People that's on Blu-ray. So I'm looking at the Wikipedia page, and uh, you'll, I'm sure citation you'll tell me. needed. I was gonna say I'm sure you'll tell me, um, but uh, it says that the uh, opening and closing credits used was from an unrelated film, The Galaxy Invader, apparently without permission. Can can, can uh, yeah. verify this? Yeah, I can verify that it's the, that it is Galaxy Invader. Whether it was used with or without permission, I can't verify that. It wouldn't surprise me either way. No, it wouldn't be surprising for London. But it is the Galaxy Invader. Yeah. All right, makes sense. But yeah, uh, I, I mean, I've I've gone on record saying I don't enjoy Pod People as much as everyone else does. It's just not my kind of mystery science theater episode. I like the the host segments, but the movie is just kind of a slog for me. Then again, I'm the rare person that doesn't like ET. So, doesn't e. I don't really want to watch a rip off of it either. But ironically, you love Mac and Me. Oh my God, Mac and Me! That is my favorite film. Uh, no, that movie could die in a fire too. Um, oh, somebody didn't get to go to McDonald's as a kid. See now, now I'm just thinking of of that thing Paul Rudd does every time he's on Conan. 
But he just shows the footage from Mac and me. Yeah, just every single time. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to show a clip from this movie. This the, <laughs> this new one? clip from Ant Man, Mac and me, every time. <laughs> Every yeah. time for the past twenty years, every time with that, I'm like that yes. movie would be, that movie would be long forgotten if it weren't for Paul Rudd and jackasses like him. We salute you, Paul Rudd. I tip my cap to Mr. Rudd. Ah, cap for ants. Anyway, um, and I think that that was pretty much the book on on this company, if you could yeah. even call it a company. I would call it a company. There's a great documentary that we stole all our information from that's on uh, the most recent Mystery Science DVD release, Volume 36, that has a 27-minute long documentary about the company. So I recommend watching that. Topical. Yeah. I actually yeah, did topic. not see that documentary. Uh, they just told me to watch the intros from the movies they, that was on Mystery Science Theater. So I watched a couple of them. And also, I went to Wikipedia. Citation needed. I, th- I think that's going to be the, the title of the episode. Citations needed. Citations okay. needed. The story of film be better than international. The... It'll be better. I guess it's a better title than. At least we're not the Citations Needed podcast. Oh lord. One day I'm just I'm gonna there's gonna be a T-shirt in the shop with like all the different alternative names. Hmm. I really should start thinking of shirt design ideas if anyone has a shirt design idea for the misty cast let me know yeah. and we're redesigning, our, we, we, buy. we're redesigning our website right yes we are um yes actually i, I guess i should mention this now because we actually missed it uh because i was busy dealing with a, with a kind of a family crisis uh two weeks ago but it is uh actually today the fifth anniversary of uh me getting the Misty Cast domain, it is the fifth uh, year of the Misty Cast existence. So that's really cool wow. that I've been doing this for five years. Uh, and and uh, Josh, uh, how how long have you been doing it for four years? Uh, Two thousand twelve is the uh, is the year I so, remember. So yeah, four being four years, and hired. I think uh, Justin was about, like, for me. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. like twenty thirteen for you. So yeah, it's but it, the show is five years old. And I I really appreciate everyone that's supported the show and liked us on Facebook and, and followed us on Twitter. Hi Ken Jennings. Um It's it's really cool to think that this this stupid thing I did like right out of high school is still going. It's still a part of my life. And that it's it's also weird that like other other podcasts on the same topic have like kinda come and gone. We've kind of We've outlived a couple of them, which is really weird. Um, yeah. Although I'd recommend everyone check out the uh, MST3K Revival League podcast if you're not already. They are a wonderful show out of uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, they they record, I think, I think they record every week. Really, really awesome people. They're actually running the uh, Misty Meetup for Turkey Day this year at the Dinosaur Hotel in Denver. So. If that's something you're interested in, I will put it in the show notes. I'm going to try to go at least for a couple days. So, uh, recommended. Really, really cool guys. Um, and yes, we are redesigning the website, uh, making it a little bit more uh, modernized and, and better looking. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from, from our webmaster about that. And we also are getting some new uh, art for the website. Which I can't wait to show you. I'm not going to show you the unfinished version, but I, I, you know, you guys will see it as soon as it goes up. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I think it looks awesome. And as I said, if you have ideas for for like shirts or anything, let me know because I want to try and get uh, a, a merch thing kind of going and just make a little bit of extra money to cover the site costs and everything because I I don't work the highest paying job so. Um, and we are going to get some more content out for you guys besides, uh, just the podcast. I want to get more into doing video kind of stuff, uh, at like events and stuff like that. I'm, I'm probably going to start doing, um, sort of, uh, what is it? Facebook live stuff when I go to Rift Tracks events. 
because uh, I think that'd be pretty cool. And I'm going to try, the next time they're in Nashville, uh, my friend and I are going to try and, and just drive up. Okay. Like, for, yeah, road trip it up, because it's only, uh, like, a few hours drive from here. It's like, I think it's like a five-hour drive. Um, which, I mean, it, uh, for a day trip, that's not terrible. Um, and we can just get, a, like, a hotel room afterwards and then just come up the next day. So we're gonna try and do that. Uh, when do you? Does anyone know when the next Rift Tracks is? Oh no! Uh, Carnival of Souls at the end of the month. Probably. Carnival of Souls at the end of the month. Okay, well, actually, I might. Do you know if they're doing that one in L.A. or Nashville? Uh, I'm not sure. I have to look it up. Or not L.A. San Francisco. Um, no, well, I'll, I'll find out and I'll get back to you guys on that because I'm think I'm gonna be off on Halloween weekend. Lucky. So, well, I was gonna do an event with the uh, the Georgia Ghostbusters that they do on Halloween. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to go to that. But I mean, if I'm able to do Rift Tracks, I'd rather go see Rift Tracks. So you, I just get to sit around and watch Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes. I mean, that's good. That's my Halloween tradition. That's good too. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, One from each season. Yeah. All right. So um, I think that's that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, Does anyone else have anything they want to say or plug? Uh, the only thing that... Well, I'll let you go first, Justin. If you have anything. No, you don't have anything to plug? No, no. no. Okay, fine. I've got two things. One is incredibly ass-licking of myself, which is the... I uploaded a video, and what we can do this is, like, this is kind of a special video bonus for the show, which is... I uploaded a video of me going through my apartment house, showing off my Mystery Science Theater collection, and basically just giving myself a tongue bath. Um, (laughs) so... If you want to know what to steal, should you ever break into my home, watch the video. Uh, yeah, I, you you tagged uh, Justin and I in that challenge. I really need to get around to that. I've just been yeah. busy. Uh, I'll probably do that probably this week. Um, I'm hoping I can hang my tangents poster by then because I've actually still not hung it up. Um, I also I kind of want to do something with the Castleton shirt I have as well. Thinking about it. Cause... If I hadn't been stupid, I would have hung. The, if I hadn't been stupid, I would have had that framed. The uh, the shirt. Yeah, now I lost it. I don't have it anymore. I have it. I just I I've only worn it uh once, and that was to see Rift Tracks Time Chasers. That's the only time I've ever worn it. Uh, it has been in my closet since I got it, and it's back there now, just because I don't I do not want anything to happen to it. Um, I've also got the uh the vhs covers that, that i got from him um i actually really need to organize my collection because most of of my dvds are from uh sky at um the uh the tape trading site but i mean i do have several like official copies now thank you josh speaking of which uh volume three and four just got announced for re-release do you want those when they come out well, three's uh, already out. Four's coming. What's what's on yeah. them? Uh, volume three has. Uh, uh, this is Unearthly. the. I'm, when I when when I mean when I mean, do you want them? <laughs> what I'm saying is, do you want my old Rhino copies? Because I'm a lazy ass and I don't want to give you brand new DVDs. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, he's. Uh, I mean, the, the three offer is still side hackers, the Unearthly, the Atomic Brain, and a short sketch. And volume four has. It has a awesome lineup of Space Mutiny, Girl and Goat Boots, uh, Overdrawn the Memory Bank, and everyone, and many people's least favorite Hamlet, but not. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take four uh, because I really like Hamlet and uh, Overdrawn at the Memory Bank and Space Mutiny. Not crazy about Girl in the Gold Boots, but I mean it's a fine episode. Oh, um, I love them. It's it's just not one of my favorites. I mean, I actually really like Volume, Hamlet just because I'm you know I'm a theater dork. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Volume Four is one of my favorites. It was it's it's got a, a, several of my favorite episodes, and it was like the first box set I bought. Besides, I bought that in Volume Eight at the same time, which I'm glad I did because after that, it was game hard to find. Right, oh, hot goblins. I need to get hot goblins. Okay, I'm gonna. Get, uh, I'm gonna give you both because I'm. I don't want to send one to one. I mean, unless Justin, do you want volume three? No, I'm gonna eventually get that myself. Okay, I, cool. I mean, you could always um, sell it on eBay, and make some extra scratch. 
Yes, I'm sure someone will want to buy the out of print DVD for like four dollars because Dude, now it's getting like, re released. Some some collector, you're gonna make a collector very happy. Hmm. I'll just give it to you so you can rip the DVDs, but then you won't have a full collection, you idiot. Okay, yeah, that's true. Okay, I'll just give it to you, and then you can give me an amethyst figure. Like, you promised uh, me that. Yeah, uh, so Target stopped oh. selling those, and I'm mm. so upset because I never got my Paradot. Okay, you can go to Hot Topic, and you can buy me an amethyst figure and send it to me. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll get it at my next uh, convention, because okay. they'll, they'll, they will mm. be cheaper there. Okay. Hey, Josh, got a question for you. Yes. So, since they're... They're chugging along with the re-releases of the old Rhino volumes. Do you think we'll get a better copy of um, Merlin for Volume 5 re-release? I am not going to speculate at that, because I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. There is no guarantee that they will get Volume 5 out. That's that's the thing you need to keep in mind with these re-releases. Nothing is guaranteed beyond the set that has just been announced, and even that hasn't been released yet, so... Just because Volume 4 is coming up does not mean Volumes 5 through 12 are going to happen. It is promising, but nothing is set in stone. And again, I am not a representative of Shout Factory. Uh, We have no way of knowing if and when Volume 5 will be re-released. I hope it's re-released, and if it is, yes, I do hope they get a better version. Is it set in stone that they will get a better version? No, but... You're 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 enunciating your words like crow. I don't want to go to jail. You, I, that's what I was going to say. You were acting like you, you were like you, you were choosing your words very carefully. I was just asking you to speculate if it comes out. You think we'll hopefully get a better. I didn't copy. hear the I didn't hear the if in there. I heard what, what I heard in my mind. You may very well have said if Toby will play the audio back to make me look like an idiot. No, if you said I thought you said when or yeah because I, again people people think that just because again there's people out there that are already speculating it's all about, about the sales. Yeah, about the again. sales. If, they, if these re-releases continue so well, they're going to keep re-releasing them. And it's so and hard if, they have. And if the parties that own the rights to the move, and if it's blah, 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 supply, demand, yada, 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 I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's, you know, in the, you know, getting the rights is a thing, but a lot of these um, early um, old rhino sets, the, it hasn't been too hard to... Uh, you know, reacquire the rights to clear them so they can well, well, the set. I mean, if you if you really want to, because well, the problem is I don't know who the hell owns Space Mutiny. I guess we'll find out on in the June. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Maybe it's in the public domain. Who or Overdrawn at the Memory Bank? I don't know who owns that one either. I know who owns Hamlet and Girl in Gold Boots, but I don't know who owns the other two. Was I don't know. Drawn made for uh, PBS yes. originally. Yeah, it was made for PBS, but who did they license it from for this DVD? That is a good question. That is a very good question. I've heard ninety different things. I don't think it's in the public domain, but mm-hmm. I, don't I don't think it is. Fact. I doubt it. I doubt. I know it uses a lot of like public domain, like animal footage. Yeah. But I don't. I do not believe the film itself is in the public domain. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think space space mutiny. I don't think is either. I think that one's no. owned by the director, but I don't know that for a fact. You know, it's. I don't think it's. Public. Do you think they'd have? Do you think they had to straighten out any like licensing hiccups with the fact that it uses? footage from Battlestar Galactica without permission? Um, the My answer to that is I don't think they used it without permission at the time. I think that they bought it's at a stock footage library. You could get from stuff heard, like... From what I've heard, it, they legit bought the use of that stock. Okay. Because yeah. I was always told if it was you, out without permission. I I think oh, it was... There, if there was, there would have been, there would have been lawsuits involved. Yeah. <laughs> we would have Somebody would have gone to jail. Because you know BSG is, you know, is even know. even at that time even before they they the the new series came out in the in the in the early two thousands BSG was pretty well known it was it was a cult TV show but it was well known so if they'd use it on pressure someone would be like um hey how'd they get their hands on that old Battlestar Galactica footage well and someone people, would have noticed something if you it's twenty here's twenty dollars we need that footage and at the time they were like okay universe it costs like yeah. twenty dollars to get it was at a stock footage library you could get you could pay twenty up front and you had it from that point on so I don't think there's any problem with that I don't know that for a fact but my, my from my understanding because they had it legitimately at the time you don't need to worry about that yeah okay but I don't know that I'm not a lawyer right on all right um it's a, it's a it's a safety bet to assume. Got it. All right. Well, I think. But that's, I think uh... volume five. 
I'm sorry I'm a jackass. I think Volume <laughs> 5 will happen because of the rights. I don't know about 6. That's an interesting one. We'll get to that when we get to that. I'd like right to on. see eventually get a couple more, like, um, for, for other people, because I already own most of these old Rider ones, because I snatched them up before they disappeared off shelves and went for, like, $100 on the Evil Bay, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't plan on replacing my old copies of the ones I already have. I'm only going to get... I'm going to get Volume 3 because I don't have that. And if they ever get to Volume 9, I would also get that. If they get that far, we'll see. But I hope for other people, they get to 7 and 8, because 7 and 8 are good. 7's got the Hercules movies, um, Killer Shrews, and... Um, oh, Prince God, of Space. See. Prince of Space. And then Volume 8. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Volume 8 is also because it's got Hot Novelins and Monster Go Go. Phantom Planet, which is one that I always liked. And Dead Talk Backwards actually is pretty decent. Yeah. So. And I, I, I guess the, the other thing we needed that we, the, I mean, there is one more thing we needed to, to get out there, which is that I'm doing an interview very soon after we're recording, the not like an hour from now after recording. In the not-too-distant future. In the not-too-distant future, I'm going to be doing an interview, and it's going to be a very interesting interview. Oh, with, yes. I think I've, I've pimped this on my Facebook. I haven't pimped this on the website. It's with somebody who is very important to Mystery Science Theater 3000. And it's not someone who was in an episode. It's not someone who was in any of the movies. But it's someone who's very important. And if you want to have a hint at, well, probably not a hint so much, as if you want to know who it is, stick around after the credits and you'll, you'll, you'll get an idea who it is. Yeah, we're, we're not going to say right now because it's, it's just, this is kind of a big deal that Josh was able to pull off here of who he was able to get an interview with. So we wanted to like let people be like, Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> we haven't we need a we need to preface it by saying we haven't recorded I haven't recorded it yet. If you hear the thing at the end of this inter at the end of this episode, then it means that the episode has been interviewed and it's in the can and we're just editing it and it's going to be out at some point. Mm -hmm. Yes. But but as of right now I haven't recorded it yet, but but the person he and or she has said yes. They are very interested, and I'm going to talk to him and or her sometime in this week. Yes. By the time this episode is edited and released, it, Josh should have the interview done. So stay we tuned really should pick this up at the beginning of the episode. So cut this out and put this at the beginning, editor man. <laughs> <laughs> or at All least right. pimp it in the description and on the boards. Mm -hmm. Can do. All right, uh, I think that's pretty well, much you, it. Yeah, this is going to get some people's attention. Yeah. And, now it's, we've, it's, you know, Josh has done a good job. It's like, you know, getting certain people to interview. I mean, it's like we, you know, in the yeah, last I'm year. Awesome. It's been, yeah, no, he's doing a lot of good hard work, people. You, you should thank him. It's like, you know, we've gotten to, we've gotten to talk to Jonah Ray. We've gotten to talk to Jackie. We've gotten to talk to many other people that have been involved in, you know, various MST3, MST3 related stuff or movies. So, and notice and that Justin a... lists the two people that I didn't actually get for the show <laughs> that Toby got. So, thanks, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Although, if you'd like a list of the people that said no, right to <laughs> follow Chief McLeod on Twitter. I don't tweet much. So you'll you'll just hear me bitching to people who you'll just hear me asking people if they have episodes of old Japanese game shows. So I hope that that's I hope you you, enjoy. you, you need to use it more for for your 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 off mic bitching. Okay. Like everyone else uses Twitter for. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's about wraps it up for this episode of the Misty Cast. Uh, is there any final business we we want to address? Um. No. Have you already mentioned about the uh, they just finished uh, filming uh, the new season this past weekend? This past week. Did you mention that, Toby? Uh, no, I guess we didn't. Uh, also, okay. they finished filming Mr. Stone's Theater season eleven, uh, and there were some leaked episode titles, but it was on IMDb, so we're not really gonna dignify them no. with reading off who what they were because. It's IMDb. It was probably fake. Like honestly, a lot of them are pretty well known bad movies, which I don't know. To me, that that kind of seems disingenuous. Be, just because it's stuff a fan would like to see, but that makes me think it's not real. 
You know what I mean? It, it's yeah, it's like and, a, a fan and, a fan's dream list. And the thing is, for people who may not know, uh, it's like the reason that you know people take stuff posts on a, on an IMDb like that with Grand Slug, just like with Wiki, is that um, IMDb can publicly edit by a lot of people, not like you know like like Wiki the Wiki can. So you know stuff that hasn't been true has been put up on IMDb when it comes to like certain uh, film related and TV properties. So. That's why we're not going to go over what they are because there's no way to know if it's legit or not. We'll have to wait and see. So I mean, screw that. I mean, I'll tell you right te- now, the films the films are. I'm telling you right now, it's Jurassic Park, Star Wars, the um, Star Wars, Casablanca, um, Westworld, <laughs> Planet of the Apes, Wild Wild West, and Pretty Woman, just for good measure. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget mm-hmm. Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street with Mara Wilson. Mm-hmm. Oh, the lame so, one. Yeah. So, Principal Clive like is that done. One. Yeah, yeah. stand alone. No, I do not. Uh, I hopefully will. I uh, well, it's just they done filming now. We'll probably see some kind of like preview trailer for the season, probably after the new year. Probably Turkey Day. That's that's when I would assume. Actually, yeah. I would assume that too. That that would be when Joel would want to show some clips. I would think so. Uh, actually, I didn't even think of that. But I'd actually really like to part- see sort of uh, the uh, classic Shirky Day idea come back, where everyone's in character the whole time. I think that'd be really interesting. Mm-hmm. I think they have to Joel, pay ex- extra for that. I'm told. But I'm well, I sure. mean, they're they're already paying all these people. It it doesn't seem like that much of a stretch that they'd go, okay, so we're going to film this thing in a couple hours where everyone does their character and Joel is the beleaguered host. Okay, go. You still have to pay extra for that, but mm-hmm. I don't know I, how much. But... I mean, they've been getting, the tricky days of getting have been getting bigger and bigger, so it would not surprise me if they kind of did that return to form. And plus, that, that's like honest. a bonus they can put but, on the DVD. That's true. Mm-hmm. So, very, very cool news, uh, and so we we'll have to wait and see when we get our first one of uh, the season footage. Yes. All right, so uh, I think that about does it for this episode. Uh, yep. I'm Toby Mobius. I'm Justin Boner. And I'm uh, Magnum P.I. I don't know. And this has been the Misty Cast. It stinks. <laughs>introduce yourself and say what it is you do well my name is wade williams Uh, i've been in motion picture business uh, for a good many years uh, both in exhibition and also in distribution of motion pictures and also produced and directed uh, several motion pictures